ductile is one such material. It is a magnesium silicate which can be converted in the now when you put it into carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is made to react with that one. You have products like silica, iron oxide and magnesium carbonate. Easy. Take that one and put it into the earth where you make this reaction with the olivine. Olivine is not the only mineral that you have. You have other minerals. Like for example, I put it here. Olivine which is a magnesium silicate. Serpentine is again another magnesium silicate of this kind, hydroxy silicate. And the third one is volastonite. All these materials are available in plenty. In the next one I show that they are present in many parts of the world and India included, you have large quantities of this one which are present in the earth. Now can you make a hole and send it there? Can you make carbon dioxide? Collect that one somehow. Let's worry about how to collect that one. That is an engineer's job again. Go everywhere where you have a coal plant, go to the smoke stacks, take that all, filter that one first, cool that one, then capture the carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide, it's, that means its critical temperature is really low, it is not very high. Critical pressure is also not very high. Subject it to pressure and slightly lower temperature, you get liquid carbon dioxide. Take it out. Take that one all the way and put it wherever you want. One way of separation. If you can put the gas because it's a huge volume, if it is liquid, it is this one. You can indeed, <coughs> excuse me, there is, a, there is a technology which has been tried out, a Sleitner technology. In that one, you take liquefied carbon dioxide, take it to about 3,000 meters inside the, inside the sea. At 3,000 meters below, when you go down into the sea, every 100 meters, one atmosphere pressure is increased. One atmosphere, very good, two atmosphere. You go to three, uh, say, meet, you know, three uh, hundred meters. You have three, at, uh, you know, atmospheres pressure like that one. If you go to three thousand meters, density of the liquid carbon dioxide will be lower than the density of water there. Therefore, if you put that one, car carbon dioxide is higher than that of the water. Therefore, if you leave the carbon dioxide, which is liquid carbon dioxide, over there, it simply remains there. It doesn't come out. Okay, that is the condition under which you can leave it there. What happens then? What if it combines with water, it forms a hexahydrate of carbon dioxide. No problem. Chemistry guarantees that. Or you can take it below the, where there are, you know, large, after all, you have taken out the oil. There are all these oil wells into which you can put it. Large number. You have coal fields, you have pulled out the coal. And coal bed methane, we call it. Coal, thin coal contains a lot of methane. You should put carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide kicks out the methane and occupies the place which was taken up by methane in that coal bed, coal bed methane. Why not we try any one of these things? One of the things which is best happens to be to react it with olivine or serpentine and things like that. You need a technology which has to be developed like this. This is the engineer's job. Bore a hole, take carbon dioxide, over that one deep enough, make it react there. How do you do that one? Reaction doesn't simply come about because thou shalt undergo a reaction, it doesn't do that. You need for that one catalyst. <coughs> Come back. Interact with the chemist. Find out which catalyst is best. If you put carbon dioxide in what way can the minerals simply absorb that one? You have done that one, you may get a Nobel Prize now. You can do that one. That's the that's the kind of challenge that engineers have in making them. Could I have the next one? The so one other things. I mentioned about the nuclear energy. As I mentioned, that that's again where we know the chemistry. You need the engineering to solve that problem, which is an outstanding problem of the, of, of, of the world today. There is no question about that one. Every country suffers. Every country has its own problem with the increase in carbon dioxide and increase in temperature. It doesn't wait for us to say that U.S. has put out all the gas, so U.S. will suffer. We will put up a wall here. No, you can't do that one. Atmosphere, it gets completely sort of, in, in, in very, very rapidly, it gets normalized and the distribution of carbon dioxide will be safe all over the world. You can produce it here or you can produce it elsewhere. And it will remain in the, car in, the, in the atmosphere and it will increase the temperature of the globe by what we call as a greenhouse effect. Not spoken about that one. But just, just take it that if you have more carbon dioxide, it is like putting an additional blanket over the earth so that the temperature keeps increasing. That's what it would be. That's because Earth radiates back the you know, amount of radi amount of heat or you know, energy that it receives from the sun. When it radiates out, it is infrared. This radiation is taken up by the carbon dioxide, which re-radiates that. 
If it had gone in the same direction and gone to space, we don't have to worry. But with carbon dioxide, it takes it off. It is in the nature of scattering, in elastic scattering. <coughs> Took it up and re-radiated to the earth in part. That is sufficient to keep it warm. <coughs> what is the thing that uh, makes our nuclear energy uh, sort of unfeasible? Nuclear energy is unfeasible because we have heard of these disasters. One was the Pripyat Chernobyl disaster, which made everybody, oh my God, if there is a nuclear, you know, you know your reactor failed, then you had a problem, no way we can't touch that one. In fact, it was a very bad design, it's a flawed reactor design that led to this particular Chernobyl disaster. This Chernobyl disaster after that one, they built around that one a steel encapsulation like this, what we call a sarcophagus. Sarcophagus means actually in, in, uh, in the Egyptian ones, dead uh, mummies would be uh, encapsulated. And like that one, this place was also covered by a steel thing known as sarcophagus. Now this sarcophagus, it became its name. This sarcophagus is also failing now. And they are looking for contributions from all over the world in order to be able to resurrect that one. Could I have the next one? The second one really which shook the world was, the recent one is Fuku, Fukushima Daiichi disaster which occurred. As you can see out of these five reactors, one by one, three of them really failed. And we had in fact the Chancellor Angela Merkel of Germany saying, Fukushima has forever changed the way we define this in Germany. And they ordered that all of their nuclear installations be closed in coming few years. But it looks like secretly that trying again to come back to the nuclear reactors with a safer design or additional safety measures are taken. The idea, you know, the, the fear is actually unfounded. In my opinion, it is unfounded. Could I have the next one? After all, we use uh, this one anyway. Nuclear fission is what we have been using. And briefly, nuclear fission is all those elements which come here. You can see this one. This is see, the amount of energy that is contained, energy density <coughs> versus the atomic weight. As you can see, most binding energy of the nucleus comes in the case in the case of iron. Beyond iron, it becomes more unstable. Below iron also, it gradually becomes unstable. You have the hydrogen, helium, etc. Here, if you increase the weight by combining the nuclei, you have energy release, which is by fusion. Beyond this one, if you can really break down, you release the energy and you get it by fission. And then naturally fissile materials are uranium. Uranium 235 in particular. And of course, there is the thorium story which I am not going to speak about. Could I have the next one? In the next one also you can see uranium 235 is what we want. It is only 0.7% of the uranium that we get as a world in general. In general, that we must uh, be bearing in mind. And it undergoes a fission and eventually anyway energy is released by this one, which we use. Now the next one shows how reactors, next one please. Next reactors were built on the basis of this fission. I have taken the most recent one, which is the Kudankulam, you know, the twin towers where you have this 1000 megawatt, you know, the nuclear reactor which has been built here. <coughs> Whatever other things be, this huge reactor really can produce in one stage. The better, but why not? This is something systemic that I cannot avoid at all. So, nuclear reactor is something, one big place, central line, power supply that you can have in the world, wherever there is, you know, whichever country it is, which is energy, which is energy hungry. You can do that. Why is that there is so much fear? Is it really true that nuclear power plants would so frequently fail? Not at all, as a matter of fact. If you looked at an analysis, more people have died in coal plants than in nuclear plants. They have supplied so much of energy. Could I have the next one show you? In fact, you should feel proud that uh, no, Baba was responsible for putting us on the international map. Look at the number of reactors. This is world over reactor. And a large number of reactors. France actually depends upon nuclear power. 90% of their power, 75% they climb, but now uh, that is you know, the record. 90% of their power is really supplied through the nuclear power. That's what it is. Germany doesn't see has reactors, but they don't. Australia, which has a lot of uranium sources, doesn't have a single reactor. Not clever people, they are selling uranium and they don't have themselves any botheration at all. Could I have the next slide in which you can say, don't go for these huge reactors. After all, there are smaller reactors which can be made. You can see here, the engineer, our engineers can do it as well. This is from a company known as Hyperion Power Modules, which has been made like this. 
If this is the man's height, this is about twice the height of a man, which can be built and completely sealed reactor. And these sealed reactors can provide, for example, 27 megawatts, enough to power 20,000 average American homes. An American home is a terrible home. So if you have an Indian home, you can have half a dozen homes in one American home. Because you don't have to come, and as soon as you go there, you don't have to have the gates going up, electrically operated, switches going on, electrically operated, microwave oven, electrically operated, every other thing, baking unit, electrically operated, running hot water, electric. Who needs all this one in, in, in a country like India? If you go there, if you are sure that you can switch on and get lights, great luxury has already been provided to us. We will be very happy with that. And therefore, it is not 20,000 homes, 200,000 homes, but 200,000 homes. Small reactors of this kind are completely sealed. They have enough uranium hydride or uranium nitride fuel, which they use now, <coughs> which can last for 7 to 10 years. You open that one and put the fuel. Or you take that one back to where they sold us to. They are going to refuel and send it to us. Another will be put there. Gas cylinder badlo. Hyper ion cylinder is done in that. All that you need is actually bore a big, a small, a small house, you know, 10 squares are like that. You know, it is all built out of cement concrete to put this unit. You have only the terminals coming out connected to your grid. What a beautiful thing, it is safe. And in fact, India, in, in, instead of signing all these agreements and in the parliament fighting with each other like cats and dogs, and at the same time handing over money and all that, they could have entered into this agreement where nothing of any supply of any kind, violation of any NPT, nothing at all. They could have done this. And how much do you need of this kind? About five, six. I can back out at our city. Other people on the Idar Kade Bengaluru is in Hakidra. If you have 24 by 7, you have electricity. Why is that we are not doing it? Only the atomic energy people should be able to answer this one, and nobody has successfully answered. Could I have the next one? All right, you went to Russia, you got this huge Kodan Kulam ones, and Greenpeace people are protesting. They are supplied you know, enough money by the United States to do this protest, so that India will continue to be India. There is a lot of interest in other countries to keep India where it is. And thanks to our governments, they have supported that one fully. <laughs> in absolutely no doubt. And we continue to be like that. With Russia, you will see this Russian icebreaker has been there for now more than 40-50 years. Because it is all completely covered by ice. They see as soon as they enter out of Russia, you will have this one. How do they travel? They have this huge <coughs> big ship like this which will break the ice. You have all hard steel which has come out that one. You, you need enough thrust for that one. It is all done by having a reactor on board. Icebreakers. And what are these icebreakers? How much would that be? It is actually 5% enriched uranium to fuel elements and it can give the work a 900, for example, a work a 150 reactor is just about 90 megawatts or less than that one. That's what it is. Two of them would do. Instead of going for this 1000, 1500 megawatt kind of a units that we talk about, I don't know why India didn't settle for, look, you please come here, you make us this one, and give us just this 100 megawatt or less than that one, 30 to 50 megawatt. This 100 megawatts mean the electricity equivalent of that one will be 60 percent of that one. Give that. You don't have yen, yava tapatrayevu ilde, yar kaili vajjivu ilde, yava United Nations interference ilde, yava nuclear agreement ilde, it will not work. I don't know why we didn't do that. We could have learned it from that. In the next one, I will show you, it is even better. They are the barge based ones. I thought, well, you know, accident, I went to Yen Gati, I went to the Vedok Karala, and there is nothing at all. Because if there is an accident, it will go into the sea. <laughs> no problem. Once there is a lot of water, there is a lot of cooling, and there is no effect of any kind, like Fukushima or whatever it is. You don't have anything like that. Once that is stopped, it is stopped. Why didn't we do that? And these are also for lower values of that. So, our solution to problems of this kind is actually for India like country is in smaller reactors, small nuclear reactors, the SNRs. They are known as SNRs. World over there have been conferences on that one. Could I have the last one? Not the last one, a couple of more slides probably. Have I exceeded my time? I suppose so, isn't it?
Do I have a few more minutes? Yes, sir. Because you know, um, one of the bad things that all of us in my profession have learned is, uh, or at least have been uh, uh, cursed uh, to live a life is, we don't know where to stop. <laughs> you know, we keep on talking as if, you know, we have a birthright to address people who are a captive audience. Papa, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you so this is what is for us. Next one, of course, energy, energy. So all these problems of the world today hinge on that one. If you have energy, you are a good country. Why do we respect the present Prime Minister Modi? Because he made Gujarat 24 by 7 electricity available place. It has come for price everywhere, including the scientific community. I'll show you one of those slides. Extraordinary. And that is because you use the solar energy there very effectively. <coughs> See, all the energy that we are talking about, that man-made and used energy is only this small little cut that you have made. Rest of it is unused energy that is available for use, utilization from sun. Swami Devane Lokapanane. Te namostu namostu te. Ninnindha na vella badikidhi vi. Yalla kadiyo. Veda Rishikil Kala Dindalu ne. Na usurindha na niyakas totra maadhi vi. You have given us the energy. That's what it is. Hotane. Surya ninda, Belaku, Avaninda energy, Avaninda Sasirashi, Avaninda Niru, Avaninda Yala. Chatan is an idea, but in you sir, when you begin to realize, yes, that is what we are back to now. But I have the next slide. In the next slide, I show share of renewables in the global energy. Solar energy is considered as renewable because of the name of exhaust Madakagalula. If you can, you can continuously use that one. It is an inexhaustible bank source for us. And that is the way that it is a very small percentage of which we are presently using an absolutely small slice of even this 8% which is the solar energy. But that has been growing very rapidly, reasonably rapidly. We have 10 times that energy which is available in the form of wind energy. Could I have the next slide? <coughs> See this is where, you know, for example, solar energy in India has been utilized. This is the world's first canal top project of Sanand branch of Sardar Sarovar Nigam, generating one megawatt electricity from Somalar panels at the Narmada branch. Canal smart meter. This chief minister has been sufficiently, you know, sort of clever. He has got his canals covered with solar panels. So in Karnataka, like the Ayodhya, the land, Konko Bakri, Elbarate, Oa Konko Murana, that is also plancha. It looks like in Gujarat, it has done just the opposite of that. <coughs> they had this canal. It looks like eventually in the Narmada plan, there are 27,000 kilometers of canals. He has covered these canals with beautiful panels of, you know, you know like this, what we are seeing. <coughs> Completely covered. Number one, solar energy is absorbed by the solar panels to produce electricity. Number two, water underneath that one is not getting heated and evaporated. Both of them have saved an enormous quantity of energy. It has come for price everywhere all over the world. That's what it is. 35,000 kilometers area of the Thar Desert is now deserved for this one. In desert you can't do anything. Therefore, we can be number one. We can have, we can use a lot of energy that is available in India, provided you can make do solar panels and make them cheap enough. It looks like other countries are making so best time to buy it all from China and use it in India to produce all the power you need. At least in one way you can be a little more. They, they want to have competition. They are in competition with other countries. So they are cutting down the price. Okay, very good. Cut that price and give it to India. So you can do that. Instead of buying all those little, little ties, dirties, etc. everywhere Chinese made. You open that one, your label, you know, all the household goods that you have, if you open that one, it's made in China. Instead of that one, buy all the solar panels. Give them business all that. You don't mind that one. You are shaking hands with them. Do this one, you can do it. But I have the next slide. <coughs> Chinkara Park is one of those which has been mentioned as one of the largest in India. 214 megawatts kind of a solar park that you have in Chinkara. Solar park. Then pass to Gujarat. Then again in Gujarat. The largest one happens to be it is this, <coughs> what is that one? The largest one, the Maura photovoltaic power station has 2,520 solar crackles, 262 modules, producing 62 megawatt of the peak power in this one. And that is actually in Portland. 
and you have seen the last uh, top 10 of them, at least in that one, you definitely have India, which has been mentioned because of this big one, 240 million. We're not bad, but we have to do a little more. And all this is possible only. Proper engineering. Covering that canal and using that one is engineering. Now, in the last end to Varshadinda, now, both Kadayal and the energy, whatever talks I have given where, I have taken the opportunity to mention about this one. Taken and did better get in an ill in the Namur of the number, hardly. At the Koka Kadra, Nalamangla Tankahoga, I'm a Manglu Highway and Koka Kadra. Nalamangla Tankahoga Highway and the Why not we cover that one with solar panels? Tadigar or on such hundred water put, our wool pistol over the third part of the Tadigar. How that? Other jet take a well made of solar panels, he ain't cast by. You can have four minutes for solar panels at the time. And it can provide electricity all the way from Yeshwan to Nelmangla at least. You don't have any problems. 24 by 7 power for people who want to go and settle down in Nelmangla or by the side of Nelmangla. You can do that. They have not done. Mangalur Highway, barren highway going all the way. Can we not cover that? It is easy. I don't know why they are not doing it. There was this previous minister, a lady. What is her name? <coughs> current life. Shobha current life. I thought that she is a very intelligent lady because she was the first one to propose, look, we are going to change all these lamps into CFLs. First thing that should be done in India. In fact, you save a lot of power by that time. In fact, somebody in the United States was given a you know, Fermi Award for just doing that one particular thing and planning electricity consumption in California. California, in spite of the increased industrialization there, consumption of power remained flat for one decade just because of such plans. That is what happened. So he got the award, the award for that. It was given to the scientists. <coughs> Who has been scientific advisor to the government of California? Maybe this lady could do that one, but it looks like my voice never got out of the hall there. I was lucky. It needs to go out. And you can't be going and doing that one. And I don't know how such things could be done. Could I have the next slide? You can see that one. There are lots of desert, garden desert. Desert mean, does it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't receive any rain at all. It receives a lot of rain. No vegetation is there. That's what it is. That is for very different people. That is where we get a lot of confusion as to what is the connection between trees and rain. It also reduces the desert. How do you account for that? There is no greenery. And things like that could happen. Covering 4% of the world's desert area with photovoltaics could supply the equivalent of all the world's electricity. Solar energy is in that position. Look at this one. This is an engineering field, isn't it? It is solar thermal. You have lots of parabolic mirrors which are located here. They all reflect to the top of that one. Do you see this one? You can see, I don't know what you can see. There is, as if, you know, some kind of a, you know, you see the beam of light comes sometimes, you know, strong beam of light. Like that one you can see, this beam here. <coughs> All this one, it's actually, <coughs> it is vapor coming down here. Now this is the reflector, the light which are beaming up to that particular point where it is completely heated, converted into steam and that steam is driving the turbines inside and generating the electricity. One of the biggest ones today, which is located next to the store, solar thermal power plant in Spain. They are also very beautiful to look at. The architecture of that one is simply marvelous. India is also planning to do that one. This is an engineering field. Because we all know that heat can, you know, so we can get the heat from the sun and you can heat water. Water becomes vapor and vapor can be under pressure. It can drive the turbine. There is all science. Science ends there. Engineering begins. That's what it is. I took this as an example primarily because of that one. Could I have the next slide? I speak about just two important people and end it there. I have put it as Justin Sutton is in the class of Buckminster Fuller. The latter one we shall see who he is. I could have chosen the engineering the genius as an example of Saram Vishweshwaraya from our own people. Since you all know that one and see is not a contemporary, I thought that we would go to a contemporary or at least, you know, very close to our own lives. Just in certain thought that in the United States itself, you can set up parallel, this is the highway now, parallel to that one, you can set up a railway system like this, which makes use of superconductivity. 
All that he has is, he has poles on which you have these steel tubes, uh, about six feet by six feet, consisting of a large number of tubes inside that one. You can carry water, you can carry fluids, you can carry cables, you can carry whatever you want. Surface of that one is covered by solar panels, as you can see. Above that one are these two rails upon which sits any kind of a carrier of this kind. <coughs> that carrier is going on a tube which consists of magnets. And inside the carrier itself is a superconductor, a superconducting coil which has been cooled. It is dipped in liquid uh, nitrogen, uh, depending upon what kind of superconductor you have. And that will create a levitation field, so that levitation transport is affected by this one. Solar energy, which is generated on this one, is straight away converted into hydrogen by having that one decompose water. And that hydrogen is taken into these are the actual fuel cells in which hydrogen and oxygen combine to produce electricity. Electricity is supplied everywhere. Small calculation. 100 miles generates 84.24 megawatts in just one hour at peak exposure to the sun. Investment is needed for this one. In that country there are venture capitalists, there are banks, there are governments. He has been able to put all these three suppliers of money in order to invest in this one. Supporting six foot solar canopies and sites, such parts will generate excellent solar power. <coughs> At 10 watts per square foot, we can generate 633,600 watts per hour per mile. And you have eight hours day or six hours day, it doesn't matter. You have enough power generated. Why is that we are unable to even think of this one? My putting this slide is to tell you that those geniuses may be there in your mind, sir. You need to apply. You need to be enough right now. You need to imagine. You need to dream. If I can use that, borrow that expression and say, dream big and you must be able to do that one. This person, Justin Sutton, is actually not a graduate. He was a mechanical engineering diploma, less than that one, a certificate holder. He went on to train himself in all sorts of things. He's from Michigan. He eventually has come up with this one when they said that where there is going to be a power crunch in the United States. What is it that could be done? He combined the travel because they have 56,000 miles of highways in the United States. 56,000 miles. You can put it all along that side, but you can do that one. Highway itself will generate for him what, is the, what exactly is needed without having to really think of any other things. I wish I had seen this one even before I thought of our Nelamangla Highway because, you know, <coughs> it, would, it, would, it would appear that the part of this elemental thing that was there going on with Justin, you know, uh, with, with Sutton has been sort of going on in the minds of many. At any one point of time, they think there must be others who are thinking about it the same way. Sutton had done that for several years earlier. And of course, he was born in 1967, by which time I had got my doctorate. Therefore, he is much, much younger. And there is no question of, uh, <coughs> you know, any comparison because the young mind, which is far superior to what I am able to think. You can see this one. High DC superconductivity research, if it were to be really sort of, you know, come to a reality, we gave up that one. And we found that we had invested a lot of money recklessly and we lost that. We lost the initiative. All over the world, it doesn't mean that people are keeping quiet. They are experimenting with ITC superconductors in a major way. One of these days, if there is a big announcement, we should be prepared for that one. So, magnetic levitation, maglev, is a, re mag maglev is a reality. And these are the kinds of cars that will move on those rails which I mentioned to you. And this is how levitated trains could be used. Could I have the next slide? In the next slide again, I bring Buck Buckminster Fuller. Buckminster Fuller he is from Massachusetts, young man who later joined Harvard University. But he was thrown out twice out of the Harvard University because he was spending all his money in all sorts of forbidden things he was doing in Harvard University. So he was thrown out. After having been thrown out, he started his own business with his father. That was a failure. He was about to commit, commit suicide 19, when he was 32. And of course there were two reasons. One is his first daughter passed away. They were, uh, you know, sort of, you know, they were experimenting with various ideas in science and technology. At that time, he thinks that he was responsible because he had a house which was sort of damp and it was responsible for the failure of her health that he died. 
So he was about to commit suicide. Then he had this epiphany. Maybe means on the div, that is, divyanu bhavanti vala namali aditya gundu kanskano do. Inya ra ruban heedo do. Inya udho the namge aatma kanta do. That epiphany didn't take that in the in the Christian uh, in the faith. So he had this. Or he had this on the anubhava. He had the anubhava and felt that he felt that he was elevated. He was up in the air. He was surrounded by a flood of light. And in the flood of light, he was he was hearing. That somebody was telling, look, you have a certain responsibility having been born. You should not commit suicide. You can go back and think about what you can do for mankind. That is recorded. It is not as if you know if somebody were to say that for itellar or akasmat in the head putra channel nine or did come one time. Our both kade yella muk mukka khid do. Nim yeh kans do. Nim yeh kans do. Nim nijwaglo or khid dera. Atwa nim nim head. Sari, I'm sure Madi or Adi, Tagudu, Akwarija, and Laki, Karaki, Karaki. Atharai, Adenu Aglita. So that is, that is how we survive. But a brilliant mind. He was the first one to come up with what he called as the dimaxia. That means dynamic maximum uh, tension. That's the, that's the way. <coughs> <coughs> that he combined words. In fact, he was a wordsmith. 